about halfway between uh, Des Moines and Omaha, right on Interstate 80. And we're probably uh, a little bit different uh, direction here. Most of the uh, presentations have been uh, by research uh, colleges, that type of thing. We are a um, company, a uh, corporation man manufacturing um, products that uh, are used in the tile drainage industry. Um, my background, I, uh, I'm a customer service technical support person for AgriDrain. I do these types of shows. I go out and uh, help with technical issues, those types of things related to tile drainage. Um, just a little bit of background. AgriDrain was a company started in the uh, late 1970s. There were three brothers uh, in Adair, Iowa, Charlie Schaefer, who's still the owner, Chris Schaefer and his brother Bill were tile contractors. They were installing tile, they were building ponds, building terraces, that type of thing. They were in that business and they uh, found a need, a niche if you will, for some of the products that uh, were either lacking, couldn't get them in a timely fashion or, or uh, were not of the quality that they, they felt was needed. So they started a manufacturing company um, manufacturing rack guards as an example, those types of things uh, themselves, and it evolved. The company, uh, eventually they found that that was uh, maybe more of a niche or something they wanted to pursue. So they sold the contracting business and started AgriDrain Corporation, and it's evolved from there to where it is today. It's a company of about 50 employees. Um, we don't manufacture pipe. We don't manufacture uh, drainage tile. We do stock uh, in our yard in Adair, primarily um, Prinsco, which is a pipe manufacturer out of Minnesota. So we stock tile. Farmers, contractors can come get it at our yard, or we can uh, ship it to them. Uh, and we have all the, uh, uh, the other tools that go along with um, installing tile. So, you know, I, I have to be honest, our, our uh, business is better when more tile is being put in the ground, which may be a, a not so well thought of in some circles, but that's just the fact. Um, we do have a, uh, I think, a philosophy that, that we know there's some issues uh, with tile, obviously, the hypoxia zone, those types of things. So we, we're proactive on those things. We know, we're, we're, we know that uh, it's a, a world out there that's going to require a lot of clean water initiatives, and we want to be part of that. So we're, we're not just about putting pipe in the ground. We're, we're trying to be good land stewards and water quality uh, addressed issues also. So here's the, um, one of the things that we talk about is, uh, is your subsurface drainage system uh, working as hard as you are, meaning you've got all this uh, tile in the ground, is it doing what you really want it to? Okay, so this is going to kind of go through the uh, past, present, future of tiling. You know, tiling is sometimes thought to be fairly new technology, but it's really not. It's been around for a long, long time. And uh, just uh, looking at these slides, you'll see that a tile being put in, maybe this is a surface drainage ditch being dug. Um, point being on the, on the bottom there is that when you put this in, it's going to drain to the point of, uh, where it quits draining. It evolved over the years, obviously. We've got uh, uh, trenchers, pipe was put in, but um, always was the, the reason for putting pipe in the ground, whether it was 100 years ago or whether it was, is today, is to get rid of the excess water in the soil. That's the reason you put a pipe underground, it's perforated, or when it was put in like this, or like this, it was uh, maybe uh, clay tile or cement tile with a gap in between the tile. The idea, the whole goal is to get rid of excess water in the soil. But it always ran. We've evolved now. We've got the corrugated plastic pipe that you see in this big roll uh, on the upper left. But the pipe on the bottom right is running all the time. We've evolved to, uh, this is showing a laser 
uh, the technology for putting in pipe has changed. It's gotten more effective, more uh, accurate. People can do it more accurately than they used to be able to do it. You can do it faster. This is showing a laser. Most, a lot of the tile that's put in today is put in with uh, GPS systems. So it's, it's uh, evolved. You put it in quick. You can put it in a lot uh, different depths. You can drain different ways. So the point is that uh, we, we got to this point today where you can put in tile very effectively, but we still drain to the point of where that tile depth is, if, unless you get a recharge. You're going to drain down to the tile depth 24-7. So we're talking about the dawn of a new era. Um, this is the, uh, the uh, golden rule of drainage that uh, Gary attempted to quote. Um, but it really is drain only amount of water needed to ensure equipment access and healthy crop production and not a drop more. That was Dr. Wayne Skaggs from the, uh, in North Carolina that has been doing this for a number of years. So you might ask yourself, well, um, you know, why, why would we want to put this pipe in the ground? And we get this question quite frequently from producers. Um, you spend a lot of money to put pipe in the ground to get rid of the excess water. Um, so why in the world would you spend all that money to get rid of the excess water and then, uh, you know, do something to keep it there? Um, you know, the, the, whole, the whole reason for tiling, obviously, is to get rid of the excess water. But the reason to get rid of the excess water is twofold. Um, but as, as looking at it as a producer would, it's, the ultimate goal is it's going to be profitable for you. Now, we know that tiling is a, a good investment for farmers, or they wouldn't spend the money to put it in. They wouldn't put more tile in year after year. One of the things that farmers see is a, a yield monitor. They go across the field and they go across that tile and they see that yield jump. They, you know, that's a pretty uh, strong message to them that uh, tile is a good investment. So, um, you know, it's the yield potential of putting tile in. And then a bigger thing maybe even today than it used to be is the timing that uh, you can get into that field when you need to. You've got farmers that are farming thousands of acres now they can't wait for a field to dry up to get in there and get their work done. So it's, it's, it's a yield plus a timing thing that, um, that they will invest in the tile. So what's in it for me, thinking of a producer? Um, you know, it is, it is twofold. By, by using drainage water management and keeping as much water, draining as little water as possible, you're, you've got a potential yield effect positive potential yield effects. You're not going to get a, a big yield bump every year. Some years are obviously different from other. But in a, in a year like last year, in Iowa anyway, and most of the Midwest, we had a drought. And the effect that drought has had on our business has been uh, amazing because we're getting, getting more calls than we've ever gotten about drainage, water management, and sub-irrigation. So, you can see some of the uh, private and public uh, benefits. You can reduce uh, nutrient transport 30 to 60 percent, um, reduce pesticide, herbicide, store more water for crop use, uh, can be used to sub-irrigate. It takes quite a bit of more um, design to, to uh, design a system for sub-irrigation versus just drained water management. Sub-irrigation meaning that you pump water into the system and irrigate from the ground up rather than a, a pivot from the, from the top down. Um, reduces flooding, that's debatable. Reduces liquid animal waste. I think that's proven that if you can keep that uh, water in the soil profile longer, you're going to have a, a good effect. Uh, improve wildlife habits, habits, habitats. So um, we feel the effect is twofold. We think uh, to, to get it sold to the producer, he's going to have to have uh, incentives, and those would be a potential yield, plus if he can get cost share um, to do this, that's going to help also. So one of those programs where you can get some cost share help is through EQIP. Um, AgriDrain has a sister company now called ESE, which is Ecosystem Services Exchange, and its, it's goal, the goal of that company 
is to help producers um, design systems for drainage water management and go through the process, if you will, if they want to get cost share to work with the NRCS and, uh, and go through that process. You can get up to like 50% cost share on the structures. You can get uh, cost share on the design. So it's a, it's a good incentive for the farmer to put that uh, drainage water management system in. This is showing a, uh, a illustration of how water drainage water management would work where you've got a water level control structure. In this case, they've got a, like a bigger uh, tank or a bigger pipe going into the structure. The thought there being that you maybe have that for, uh, for liquid animal waste to possibly where you could pump out of that and reapply. I don't know how often that's being done, but um, I know in Ohio there's been a lot of research on, on the effect of uh, holding the water and soil profile for liquid animal waste retention. Um, this would show more like how you would control that water table throughout the year um, for, for two things, for yield and for keeping as much water in the, in the soil profile for the uh, environmental impact. So um, you've got you got like January, February, and this is probably more in the Iowa or, or the parts of the Midwest that, that are maybe frozen in the winter, where you keep the, uh, the water table up here, January, February, maybe in March you start to reduce it to get your crop in the ground. And then throughout this growing season here, you try to manipulate these stop logs to, to, to have a, a water table that's the most benefit for that crop that you have out there. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit, but that's one thing that we can't, uh, we're not able to have a, a real uh, definitive figure on where should I keep my water table to get the ultimate yield impact. We don't really know. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a guessing game, but we know that if your tile is, in this case, four foot deep and you've had a drought and your, your water table is now four foot deep, It'd be nice to have that water table a foot or two higher so you have more water available for the plant. So you get into this area, you drain for the fall, and then you get back up for the winter. There's no sense in draining in the winter, so keep the water table high in the winter. This is just uh, showing how you can use these water level control structures by stacking the stop logs up uh, to, to, to raise your water table different times of the year that it needs to be done. This is uh, an illustration of uh, with drainage water management, it, it obviously isn't the the silver bullet, if you will, for uh, some of the problems that we have with the water quality issues. Hypoxia zone. It's 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 applicable in flat flatter terrains. Uh, I wouldn't say only, but the flatter the better. That's where this practice is really going to uh, uh, be implemented in, on a lot of acres. I think it's in, estimated that somewhere between 10 and 50 millions of acres in the United States could implement drainage water management because it's flat enough really to be used. So this would show you get your flat as a pancake. That's no problem. Like uh, Gary was talking up in the Red River Valley, it's a perfect scenario. You've got, you got a flat area, you can put one water level control structure in here, or here, or here, and you effectively done that whole field by putting in water, one water level control structure because what you do there is caught throughout the whole field. But the problem is not all our uh, topography is perfectly flat. You've got some slope, you've got some hills. So this would show if you had a, uh, a system where you were trying to do drainage water management and it was tiled in this fashion, you put a structure in but you're only affecting a uh, you know, a small area of the field here because it, up here you're not going to have any effect because it's it's at a higher elevation. You can put in water level control structures to stair step that water up through the soil profile. Uh, that's one option. We do have a new product that we've been on the market for about a year or two. It's called the Watergate, and the main advantage of the Watergate over the the slide we just saw was that it's a uh, head differential device. Basically, as the water backs up um, on this downstream side, it closes this water gate and you stair step your water table up. So as you uh, go up through the elevation in your field, you can uh, have these water gates installed at one foot elevation differences 
and they can keep that water table uh, where you want it at the other end, if you will, of the, of the field. It's kind of showing up here. So this shows a little bit uh, clearer. You've got one structure here where you put the water uh, stop logs in to control it. You install this water gate here and here as you go up through the soil profile. And you can see as it closes, it stair steps that water table. The whole um, idea is to keep your water table consistent through that field. What you do here is what you do up here. So this water gate would help to maybe make more acres uh, available for the practice of drainage water management. The, the, the main um, improvement, if you will, of the water gate over putting a water level control structure, you could do the same thing, putting a water control structure here and here, but those things stick up above the ground. Farmers do not want to farm around anything that they don't have to. So the main advantage of the water gate is that it's a buried device that uh, reacts to what you do with the water level control structure. This just shows another another illustration of how that how that would work. We really do have two different types of structures. We've got the manual structure that you see over here, where you just stack the stop logs in. We do have a, an automatic structure that's shown here, with has a uh, slide gate that's uh, controlled by a linear actuator. It's 12 volt DC system. It's got a solar panel. You can put a rain gauge in. Um, this system has uh, evolved. We're actually going through another iteration, if you will, of, of design. But uh, it's it's we've got a system that works. What we're trying to do is get the system where it's affordable. Um, you know, we're in an ag market. It's it's a little different than a uh, construction type market. Uh, it, it's it's harder to sell um, a higher priced system into that. So we're we're getting close, but our main focus now is trying to get this affordable for farmers. And basically what you're going to do with this system is you're going to have a, um, a way to monitor the water level in the structure on the upstream side. So what your water table is will reflect what's in that structure. And this gate will um, open and close to maintain that water table set point that you choose as a farmer. It's a two-way telemetry system. You can uh, monitor the water table, the battery voltage, rainfall, those types of things uh, remotely. It's, it's a remote system, so you don't have to be there to pull the stop logs out and put them back in when you need to change things. Um, this is another new product I'm going to just briefly talk about. It's our water quality inlet, we call it. I don't know how familiar you are with uh, surface drainage, but there's um, pocket holes or um, terraces that are installed, and, and they have usually a surface riser that comes to the surface and has holes in it, and that takes that water away from that ponded area quickly. Um, but one of the problems with that is that you also take a lot of soil, because the surface risers generally have one-inch holes, and so uh, when the water gets above them, it can, it can move a lot of soil. The whole idea behind this water quality inlet is that it, uh, it, it has individual straws in this, in this uh, assembly here, and they've got like uh, 70,000 slots in them. They go all the way through down and, and take the water out here. So they're a, uh, they're a smaller opening to take that water away. Our goal was to create something that would take the water away quickly. Uh, maybe not quite as quickly as a, as a standard riser, but quickly enough. We wanted to move less sediment, and we wanted to be able to be farmed within reason through. Um, so it, it's, it's fairly new, too. We've seen some really good results with this. Uh, the main advantage of this, uh, as far as water quality, would be that it moved less sediment than you would with a standard riser. So this just kind of shows a, a, a potential uh, install where you'd have a maybe a manifold with these water quality inlets up. Uh, this would be your emergency. If it got too high, you'd have a disturbizer to take the water away. Uh, we do have these installed at uh, Aggregate. We, just last year, we built a, this is a wetland. If you go further down the hill, there's a pond down here where these trees are at. So you've got this kind of little berm here, uh, wetland here. All the water from our 
parking lot and building runs into this area. So we put a manifold with these um, water quality inlets in just to see how they perform. And you can kind of see that we got a lot of rain this year. It was 2000, whatever that is, 11. It rained a lot. So we got to see a lot of uh, movement. And you can see that this was uh, a one-day um, event. And uh, by the end of this day, the water was completely gone from this area here. So they, they performed pretty well. They're maybe not quite as quickly moving the water as a standard riser, but we're pretty happy with it. So um, I'd be glad to take any questions if someone has something. Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. There is, actually. Um, right now, the water gate that we have is, uh, we've got one. And it's, it's got an 8-inch um, connection on it, 8-inch SCR35 stub. So it can hook up to 8-inch pipe or 6-inch pipe. We're working on a 12, a bigger one that'll fit 12-inch pipe. That'll be out soon. But it, in regards to your question, we do get, we do get um, questions all the time. Could, could you, could your device be changed for six inch uh, increments or foot and a half, two foot? And um, we're looking into that. The thing that, you know, might be a little bit of an obstacle there is, you know, are you going to, can you sell enough of those at the different head differentials to make it worth the time to do? It can be done. Um, and we're looking at it, especially maybe when you get into sub irrigation, you may want to control to a six inch uh, differential rather than a foot. Uh, right now they are a foot, uh, so you got to install them at a foot and they're going to react. Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at that. Another question? Well, I want to thank our speakers today and the audience today. Um, I'm not sure that anybody gave you the one silver bullet.